Thank you. Can you hear me? OK. <laughs> All right, great. So like um, our awesome room manager mentioned, I'm a neuroscientist trying to bridge the uh, gap between clinical and computer science. By that, I mean trying to enable multiple di diverse stakeholders within the research community to be able to use it and uh, help solve big problems in neuroscience, right? And in this context, I've um, gone through several iterations of uh, various software trying to solve our problems and then landed on Python three years ago and I never looked back. I'm gonna just try to um, give you a glimpse of why I, um, it is so good for our applications. As you know, Python is popular. I don't have to tell you guys, you're here. And it's projected to be even more popular. And I've just learned this year that more people have searched for uh, Python more than Kim Kardashian, so that explains to you how big that is, you know? <laughs> so, and you can see the data. I'm not just making it up, okay? So it's pretty popular. So before I tell you why it's ideal for research software, I want to tell you a little bit about what is research software and how is it different from regular software. And the biggest difference, basically, uh, in all the important technical aspects, it's no different. It's just software at the end of the day. But the biggest difference is who is involved in making this software and using it. And most of them, like, uh, basically are never formally trained neither experienced. They just pick up something from Stack Overflow or online courses, and then they just use it until it works and keep going, right? That's the biggest difference, in, uh, to put it in simple terms. And many of them are like a, either a developer or a user or a designer or a tester. Nobody is formally trained or has some serious experience in it, right? And most of these efforts are not funded well at all. Uh, basically, the focus is not software. That's the problem. They're not trained, as I mentioned, and most of them are actually multitasking. They themselves are the designers, developers, testers, and they, they, they provide support, right? This is the crux of the problem in research software development. And the target is always changing, right? Not only you're not trained, uh, things are moving fast because your focus is on science without any clear requirements or specifications, and you need to constantly add or develop new methods, and requirements keep evolving, like mentioned. So by the time you're done writing something, basically your problem has moved, so you need to pick up new things, right? So that's the biggest challenge. So typical uses life cycle looks like this. You know, it's not very different from uh, a regular software usage also, the difference being, like I mentioned, um, community is involved, so lots of students, lots of researchers, basically without any professional skills. So at each stage, for them to be able to fully participate or contribute to this process, the technology that is actually behind this must not present any barriers at all, right? Um, you can have most awesome niche software solving something really well, but if it takes you eight months to learn, it's not gonna be used because their focus is not software at all. They just need to quickly learn it, test it, implement it, and get their problem done and move on, right? So yeah, basically the software is not the focus. It's just a means to the end. And reproducibility is a lot more of a priority than actually uh, getting everything in order as per the software best practices. And not only it has to be easy and accessible, it should allow for reuse and contribution from everybody because uh, for the big problems, one lab or a few folds cannot just solve it by themselves. Community has to be able to buy into it. So uh, not only uh, it should just, focus is not just technical does it run, but also does it produce the right thing which is actually a much bigger of a challenge than just unit testing it. So in addition to that, some of the challenges are the technology stack people use in different domains. Uh, it's heavily fragmented. Basically, people uh, start with what they are uh, familiar with or what is popular in their uh, domain of science. 
and they, not a lot of investment into training or skill development, or supporting the existing software, or maintaining them, or getting help from professional developers. Right? And there's a lot more users than contributors. That, right? And whoever is interested in actually solving this problem, they're not actually rewarded. That's another problem with uh, research software, right? So they focus, they're only rewarded for their science, but not software. So in order to actually produce something that's used and sustainable, open validation is actually the key as a community, and that presents a big challenge if, it's not, if the software is not easy to learn. And not only that, because the requirements keep changing, we need to, we need, um, um, the community needs easy and agnostic guidelines, the sort of Zen of Python type of guidelines for scientific validation. And to encourage people to follow the best practices because they're not professional developers, uh, that's actually um, a big, uh, big key. And the software often need to be endorsed by scientific societies to establish trust. People are not gonna just pick up something from GitHub and invest a year or two in, it, in their fr primary thesis topic, right? So although a lot of people try provide the best quality endorsement by certain scientific societies to uh, vouch for its scientific validity is actually key. So these are the type of constraints under which develops research software. And basically, given the, in this context, what are the ideal qualities for the technology that you can build your research software on? And the first one is it must be easily develop, deliverable. It should not require, um, uh, it, it should not cost money or take a day to install. It must be easy. It must be easy to learn also. And it allows everybody in the process to contribute, not just the professional uh, skill developers, but also students who have just joined the lab as an intern. And uh, basically, it must do a diverse array of tasks already, because science requires so many things, including basic computing, statistics, machine learning, visualization, web accessibility, etc. It covers a vast range of aspe uh, uh, aspects, and the technology you use to build research software must be able to serve all these purposes. And it must be easily portable. By portable, I mean you, not only you need to be able to simply write a little script to get implement a quick algorithm, you need to be able to uh, morph it into a fully batch processing pipeline, as well as a fully object-oriented API to make it a foundation for other people. So this kind of portability is actually key for it to be used and sustained in the community. And it must be open source because there is not enough money for proprietary software. So with all these desirable requirements as, um, for technology to build research software, I'm gonna give you a few reasons why Python is ideal now. Biggest selling point for Python is it's highly, highly readable. You look at it, you will know what's going on. You don't have to spend too much time. Uh, that means very low b barriers to learn and collaborate. You can quickly prototype uh, from a small script to a full-grown uh, uh, app, interactively experiment with the data, and you can easily grow it into a big project because it's object-oriented, and you can easily package and distribute, and you can interoperate with other languages pretty easily to improve speed and also to build pipelines. And not just that, it's fully loaded for developers who wanna do bigger things, uh, dig deeper. And it's highly accessible for users at the same time. And best practices are baked in by design. And there's an excellent community around uh, all these topics. And they, everybody loves open source, and especially in its support for open science. Um, that's why Python is actually ideal for research software. Thank you so much.